Hello, Alex. You are the founder and CEO of In Silico Medicine. So welcome to Modern Healthspan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to be with you today. So, Alex, so you founded In Silico actually back in 2014, which was very early for a company focused on AI biotech. Can you give a very quick intro into In Silico Medicine? What, what is kind of the medicine? What is the mission? So sure, our mission from the very beginning was to uh, utilize uh, the advances in AI, specifically deep learning technologies, to extend healthy, productive longevity for everybody on the planet. And we do that uh, utilizing uh, credible uh, pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical approaches where we uh, uh, sell software to the uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, globally to help them uh, advance their drug discovery R&D, and we also um, develop our own pipeline of therapeutic pro uh, products. We also collaborate with a massive number of institutions all around the world uh, to support their drug discovery and development efforts. Uh, in parallel, uh, as kind of a bonus, uh, we engage in aging research and utilize aging research as a platform for drug discovery and development, uh, and also for biomarker discovery and development. So uh, supporting the aging research community um, via a very credible, established pharmaceutical bio business model. So could you, so I believe you, you developed, you identified a drug that you are now targeting for uh, kidney fibrosis, and you've discovered it, taken it all the way to, try, to uh, level one human trials, phase one, phase two. Phase two of human clinical Phase trials two. now, yes. Brilliant. So kind of using that as an example, could you talk through the process that uh, in silico uses to develop these drugs? So sure. Um, what we do, uh, it's actually easier to illustrate if uh, you like me to do that. Um, and uh, I'll be happy to show the slides. Mm -hmm. uh, but just, uh, just to... Um, uh, just to give you a gist of how drugs are developed and discovered, uh, uh, and uh, many scientists uh, in the pharmaceutical industry uh, just focus on maybe several steps of this process. So very rarely you see uh, the entire process covered by one company, for example, or one uh, research group. Very often at uh, aging research events, you don't see anybody who, uh, you know, discovered and developed a therapeutic product. Um, so it's very important to understand how drugs are discovered and developed. And uh, uh, usually this process uh, takes uh, 12, 15 years. If you are talking about novel target and uh, novel disease hypothesis. Uh, and uh, um, the failure rate is close to 99% if you start from a novel target. So if you start from a target that uh, is already well known, uh, the failure rate is smaller, but it's still very significant. And uh, for pretty much every therapeutic program, when it goes into human clinical trial, um, the human clinical trials, the probability of getting uh, it approved from phase one to uh, phase three complete is close to 10%. So mm -hmm. it's actually a very risky process. Think of it as a molecular roulette where you need to bet uh, a lot of money on many, many different uh, um, uh, squares, and, uh, um, or you can bet a lot of money on just a few different squares, right? And sometimes you have enough just to put uh, on one square uh, out of, let's say, you know, 6,000. Uh, and um, the probability of success is very similar to, you know, that large roulette with a lot of uh, squares. Um, and uh, one of the reasons for those failures uh, and for, 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 for the length uh, of this process uh, is that human biology is very complex, right? So we don't know what's driving what. And uh, AI is uh, very, very helpful when uh, um, we need to identify the, group, uh, the, the core root cause of, um, uh, let's say, a disease uh, or a biological process that changes in time. Uh, so we hope that uh, here we will be able to cut some uh, slack. And uh, I'll share the slides, uh, but I'll also talk through them. I just need to ensure that I'm the, I have the permission to present. But yeah, great, I can present. So now you can see um, 
this slide, which shows the various stages of drug discovery and development. It comes from uh, Stephen Paul's famous paper, How to Improve R&D Productivity, published in 2010. Uh, and um, uh, at least the previous part, so from target uh, to, uh, to hit to uh, phase three complete, uh, in 2010, it costed approximately $1.8 billion to develop a drug from a known target to phase three complete. Mm -hmm. uh, it took approximately 12 years, and you can see that the probability of success is about less than 5% cumulative. Uh, and uh, here is the amount of money at every stage. So once you already know the target, uh, you need to develop a small molecule or a biologic for it, right? So an antibody that binds to it and disables it. Uh, and uh, uh, we use a small molecule approach at Ancilico. Uh, so you start uh, uh, with a known target, uh, identify a small molecule that has certain properties and can hit this target, uh, disable it. Then you optimize it for uh, more kind of drug-like properties. You optimize it uh, all the way to mice where you demonstrate uh, safety and preferably efficacy or other animal models. Uh, and of course, you need to also demonstrate effects in cells, in uh, preferably organoids and other disease models. And then you do preclinical experiments where you demonstrate mostly safety. And uh, you start human uh, clinical trials, phase one safety, phase two safety and efficacy, phase three safety and efficacy at scale. Uh, and you can see the probabilities of success. Most of the time, uh, the drugs fail in phase two. Uh, predominantly due to uh, due, due to lack of target efficacy, or sometimes it's safety, but most of the time it's uh, lack of on-target efficacy. So patients just don't respond uh, as well as we predicted them to respond. And the most important part of drug, uh, drug discovery is target uh, uh, discovery and disease hypothesis. So that's where we need to model the disease, understand why it's happening, what is driving it. Uh, and that's usually done in academia and the probability of success is less than uh, um, uh, one to 5% sometimes. Mm. So uh, sometimes you don't have a good hypothesis that works. For example, for Alzheimer's, we still don't know. Mm -hmm. And governments spend billions of dollars. So what we do at Ancilica, we go all the way with uh, AI. So we discover targets, uh, novel targets. We uh, generate uh, small molecules with the desired properties. Uh, we conduct human clinical trials. And so far, our most advanced lead program that we started in 2019 uh, has progressed into phase two. So we managed to go uh, from zero, from identification of an old target, to phase two, and currently we're midway. Um, so fingers crossed, we still have a very substantial probability of failure. However, what's interesting about this program is that when we were formulating the disease hypothesis and we're doing target discovery, we also applied aging research as a platform to do that. So we actually uh, built deep neural networks trained on human age, uh, which is present on everybody. So everybody has age. Not everybody has uh, fibrosis or metabolic problem uh, or cancer. Uh, so it's very difficult to find two patients who are alike, right, from the same or from different samples. Uh, but it's very easy to find uh, a very large number of people that have age and uh, that are healthy or unhealthy. But uh, uh, usually that feature uh, is very correlated with when you're going to die and get diseases, right? So we train massive networks uh, that um, uh, predict your age, generate synthetic data with age as a generation condition, uh, and then can be used, can be retrained on diseases uh, after they understand basic human biology, they can also understand uh, disease biology much better. And we try to identify those dual purpose targets. And uh, in the case of this program, uh, we believe that this target may have dual purpose. And what we have done, we identified a new target. It's called TINIC. Uh, we generated small molecules, uh, did synthetic route planning, conducted dozens of preclinical experiments in cells, in mice, uh, and even went and did a small phase zero study in humans, and then completed two phase ones uh, in um, uh, New Zealand and in China, and then started two phase twos in US as, and uh, in China as well, for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. 
So for us, we're going after fibrosis, fibrosis with this drug. So uh, it's actually one of the very famous programs in our industry. It was on the cover of Financial Times. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons why it's popular, first of all, it comes out of generative AI. So we were one of the first in generative and published multiple papers in this uh, area demonstrating that we can generate molecules with the desired properties. But what's also interesting is that we are trying to cover the target space where aging and disease overlap. And we're trying to find targets that have dual purpose, published a paper on that uh, a while ago. So this is 2022 January, did this work a long time ago. Uh, so utilizing AI, we've identified a number of uh, druggable targets that are implicated in aging and disease at the same time, and also that are specifically in, uh, are re relevant to age-related diseases. So you can commercially, uh, in a commercially tractable way, prosecute those targets. Right, not just promise somebody that oh I want to cure aging and give me you know two billion dollars. No, it doesn't work this way, unfortunately, uh, because people are interested in get, getting return on their investment. So we have to provide them with the opportunity to um, go after a specific disease. And uh, in this study, we demonstrated that we can actually find a, a large number of proteins and then implicate them into specific. Uh, um, biological processes uh, driving aging, which is, well, that are called uh, hallmarks of aging. And uh, our lead program was implicated in six hallmarks of aging. So that's how we identify the targets and also purposed it towards fibrosis. We have another five form of AI that purposes uh, this drug towards um, a specific indication. So our philosophy is that develop a drug for a disease and then try to repurpose it towards aging. It's not the other way around. And I don't right. think the other way around it would ever work because just the amount of capital that is required for this task and the amount of talent is pretty much impossible to get for just aging. Right. So just one thought on that is that in general, drugs that are for something like kidney disease, whatever. So they will need to be prescribed by a doctor and they would tend to be expensive, especially if they're new. So they still would be difficult to use as a kind of anti, as a longevity drug for general use. Yes, that's true. However, uh, if you look at the entire toolkit that mm -hmm. a healthcare professional has today, Mm -hmm. In terms of, you know, trying to extend your life, this toolkit is extremely limited. Mm -hmm. So for uh, healthy longevity, you can use diet, exercise, sleep, uh, uh, no stress, under stress, regular diagnostics, and what else, right? Mm -hmm. So you can also look at uh, maybe uh, the tripill, right? So aspirin, uh, statin, and a beta blocker uh, looks like it might extend your lifespan. Besides that, there are very, very, very few options. Mm -hmm. And uh, one option that does seem to be very promising, however, it was not approved for aging in any way, and it's super cheap, is rapamycin, mm -hmm. right? And for some strange reason, even though it's super cheap, and it has demonstrated uh, phenomenal effects in animals, and pretty much every animal model has been tested in, uh, we do not see doctors prescribing it against aging, right? Yeah. So you've got a cheap drug that is off patent. Go ahead, do it, right? Lots of evidence, but we are not doing that. Hmm. So with the in the case uh, that I have uh, presented, where yes, you have novel therapeutic that is likely to be expensive at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have discovered it with aging research in mind, and you are basically trying to prove the point that you can utilize aging research to discover a drug, uh, you may be able to um, repurpose it for aging with more confidence than even with rapamycin. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the idea. And right. you would increase the number of uh, tools in your toolkit that you might use as a venture capitalist of longevity. You might, you, right now, you need to be prepared to experience some side effects and lose some mm -hmm. in order to win some, or maybe even win a lot. Uh, right. So currently, it is an educated decision that the person himself or herself needs to make. 
uh, and doctors are avoiding prescribing those cheap drugs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because there is very limited evidence in humans. Nobody has conducted the clinical trials, a trial uh, that would be augmented by an aging biomarker, right? So we don't know if it's going to work in humans. We know that tropomyosin is reasonably safe. We know the side effect profile because it's been tested in millions of people. And uh, just to counter your argument, well, right now you have a cheap drugs, right? That may work. Why are we not using those? Right. Uh, and uh, in order to conduct a proper human clinical trial, you actually need to go after a disease. And if you go mm -hmm. after a disease with an old drug, nobody is going to give you money to do that because... Um, uh, because it's very expensive. So those yeah. human clinical trials, you know, people are trying to go and do a clinical trial on metformin for the past, uh, you know, as long as I am in longevity. So for 20 years, people are trying yeah. to figure out how to uh, go and do a metformin clinical trial. And nobody is giving you the money, right, to, to do that. And even for the, you know, NIH-funded uh, research. Um, just because nobody wants to get an old drug uh, into the clinical trial uh, in healthy people and do all this work with no financial return. Right. So that's why if you want to get the drug on the market with biomarkers of aging, hopefully uh, you do need to go all the way, uh, all nine yards, and basically aging biomarkers come as a bonus.